Welcome to Light Therapy 2, the light bath. I am John Everblessed. The light bath is a beautiful and remarkably effective historical healing tool, a luminous heat sauna. Unfortunately, these are no longer made. This presentation is for those who would like to build their own from the blueprints that were created to build light baths for lifestyle centers. I did that. Here is why you may want to build your own. These were acknowledged as one of the most effective of all known healing agents. It has been referred to as the Rolls Royce of saunas. It becomes an anchor therapy, an anchor therapy, wherever it is used, wherever it's installed. It's a major draw to one's facility. People love this light bath. It is literally immersing oneself in warm, soothing, healing light. It can do things other saunas cannot. This presentation tells some of its surprising healing stories and how others have used it and made money with it. <clears throat> it includes the principles, protocols, and practical applications. Now this, the last sections include other forms of luminous heat therapy, some surprising other forms, uh, maybe even more exciting than the light bath. Uh, they ha offer even greater therapeutic value and attraction to your health center. These other options I'm mysteriously talking about. Okay, we start. The Battle Creek Incandescent Electric Light Bath Cabinet. It was invented by Dr. Kellogg in 1891 at the Battle Creek Sanitarium soon after his friend Thomas Edison perfected the incandescent light bulb. This is from a 1916 article. <clears throat> light bath at World's Fair. Dr. Kellogg introduced the light bath at the Chicago World's Fair in 1893. See that big, dark, sort of tall box in the very back, in the very center? That's the first version of a light bath. And we'll give you another view of that here in a moment. And there it is. This is the Kellogg light bath at the Dr. Kellogg Discovery Center in Battle Creek, Michigan. <clears throat> and that white box behind it, that's another light bath from Dr. Kellogg. I own one just like that white one there. Uh, the horizontal bath pictured here was Dr. Kellogg's first design. The white one was the common model. The white cabinet was the universal, was heated by 50, 50 antique 50 watt Thomas Edison incandescent light bulbs. They had this long filament that goes from right here at the base and goes loop and loop and loop again. It's just a beautiful warm thing. Okay, the cabinet is lined all around with mirrors, which makes this beautiful infinity effect. We're looking at a mirror here. The universal light bath is made in two pieces, so it'll fit through doors and easy to transport. <clears throat> this is the Battle Creek Sanitarium Women's Light Bath Department. See all the different versions? One, two, there's a spine light bath directly back on the wall. Battle Creek Sanitarium Men's Light Bath. There's two different kinds here as well. We are told in the Ministry of Healing, page 127, that nature is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to reestablish right conditions in the system. That's what these light baths are so good at doing, uh, expelling impurities. The one, on the, the one with the lady in it, Battle Creek Infrared Light Bath, combined with the UV arc lamp in the front. It's, that's sticking out there. And this one here on, uh, that doesn't have a person in it, that's a combination of light, excuse me, light bulbs. And that box on the outside that you see, that is an arc lamp. Uh, it's a sun lamp, in other words, antique sun lamp. Battle Creek over the bed light baths. All right, light bath stories. <clears throat> My wife and I created a light therapy room in our home 
when we lived in Barron Springs, Michigan. We advertised via word of mouth only. We had a light bath, a tanning bed, and a photo for. We charged a fee for the use of the room, which included a bathroom connected to it. So they would start out with a light bath, take a shower, and then use the tanning bed. When we moved to Kalamazoo, Michigan, we moved the light bath into a treatment room at the church as a ministry to the members and their guests. We found that the majority of those that use our light bath require several sessions to retrain their bodies to sweat again. Most Americans live indoors and they have a lifestyle where they do not sweat. That is not good. We were bombarded in this age of artificial living with thousands upon thousands of man-made chemicals and toxins. If there has ever been a time in which man needs to assist nature in her efforts to expel impurity, it is now. <clears throat> time is short. We're supposed to be learning how to do things much more simply. This one's more complicated, but it has such amazing benefits, especially during the winter, that it uh, may very well be worth spending the time and money to build such a thing. And they don't have to be fancy like this. Dr. Kellogg quoted here. He says, a vast multitude of city dwellers in civilized countries are suffering tortures from disease in various forms and dying prematurely because of the neglect of that important provision in the injunction of the almighty God. By the sweat of thy brow shalt thou eat bread. Indeed, the neglect to sweat is one of many prolific causes of disease in the conditions of, in the conditions of light. This is an amazing tool for detoxifying the body and many other things will be discussed as we go. Perspiration is one of the pathways God has provided for our bodies to eliminate toxicities. Dr. Kellogg demonstrated the light bath's ability to rapidly induce sweat. He also demonstrated just how toxic our sweat can be by collecting sweat. What he did, he demonstrated by collecting sweat from a patient using a light bath and injected that sweat into a rabbit. The results were deadly. Toxicity and withdrawal. Dr. Kellogg placed a smoker in a light bath to help him detox. And when he was done, just the first 30 minutes, the patient was wiped down with a white towel. The towel became discolored by the toxic chemicals that were sweating out of his pores. A series of light bath sessions can speed a smoker's detoxification and lessen his withdrawal symptoms. Mercury toxicity. When we were offering light bath sessions in our home, one user came in who had been diagnosed by his toxicologist as having mercury toxicity. A bit before taking the light bath for the first time, he took his prescribed oral mercury chelator. He used the light bath for only 30 minutes, but when he got up, there on the white towel he had been sitting on were several streaks of metallic looking liquid. And that was from his skin, not from his bum. His doctor verified that it was indeed mercury. The key later mobilized the mercury. The light bath sweated it out. The reason it showed up only on the towel beneath him is because when mercury in the body is released through, through heat treatments, it comes out via the pores in the form of vapor. The mercury on the towel beneath him was trapped and was absorbed by the towel. That's why we could see that. It was captured. This is why we ventilate them as they detox with mercury too. Keep the windows open, a fan. Stuffy nose. Sometimes, this is my story, sometimes when my limbs are cold, my nose gets stuffy. The blood vessels in the, in the cold limbs contract and push the blood to my trunk and head, congesting my nose and organs. I could relieve con the congestion with a six to eight minute light bath session where my body heated up and my head was kept cold. After session, I had to dress warmly to make the effect last. 
A decongesting light bath session worked especially well just before going to bed. And this worked during allergy season as well. It didn't solve the problem, but it treated the symptom enough for me to go to bed and stay asleep. <clears throat> Insomnia. We had a massage therapist uh, use our light bath periodically in the evening as part of her quarterly internal detox. She discovered that it induced sleep. Her head remained cool outside the cabinet, but the rest of her was heated, which diverted excess blood from her head to her skin in the rest of her body, causing sleep, <laughs> sleepiness. Like after a big meal when the blood is diverted to the stomach to assist digestion. Kind of what it's doing to my cat there. Did you see the cat in there? Migraines. <clears throat> we were installing the Dr. Kellogg Discovery Center at Historic Adventist Village in Battle Creek. We're on a very sharp deadline. One of our workers developed a migraine and was totally incapacitated. He had to be taken to bed. A nurse familiar with light baths found out about it and said, oh, we can fix that in 20 minutes. She said it with that much confidence and me having no idea, really, seriously. So she got him up out of bed, placed him in a Kellogg night bath, uh, excuse me, Kellogg light bath, and his migraine was indeed reversed within 20 minutes and he was back to work. Ironically, he was the employee in California that we worked with that restored that light bath you see here in the Dr. Kelly Discovery Center in Battle Creek. He was a caffeine drinker and stress tended to give him migraines. And we were under stress. My wife had several migraines which we also reversed within 20 minutes in our John Harvey Kellogg light bath. In the name of doing all that can be done, we placed cold, wet towels to her head and neck and changed it frequently. Two, we completely blocked the access hole to prevent the rising of heat from heating her head. Number three, we aimed a fan at her. We made sure her feet were also warm and that she was hydrated. And of course, we asked God to bless his methods. It's just heat, luminous heat. And by the way, this also works for stopping severe bloody noses. <clears throat> Surgical pain and adhesions. The radiantra, that's an interesting name for a portable light bath. <clears throat> the radiantra was proven of great service in the post-operative treatment of surgical cases as a means of relieving pain after abdominal operations. Kryle and others, as well as the writer, have called attention to the value of a radiant heat as a means of preventing adhesions. In other words, it was well known. Radiant heat, just a heat lamp. It was a means of preventing adhesions after abdominal sections. And Kellogg was a specialist in, um, in abdomen surgeries. In the writer's experience, heat applied in this manner has rendered great service in the treatment of abdominal pains believed to be due to adhesions. <clears throat> and there is reason for believing that by a persevering use of this measure, such adhesions may, in some cases at least, be made to disappear. Hmm. Okay. The King of England. Light institutes by the score were opened in the leading cities of Germany. The King of England, Edward VII, was cured of a distressing gout at Hamburg by means of a series of light baths. They did not say how many. There was a man in Battle Creek who was treated with one of my reproduction light baths at a lifestyle center near Barron Springs. Neither that man nor the proprietor of that lifestyle center was willing to tell me what the condition was that was being treated in this light bath. But what I was told was that the light bath worked wonders on his condition. You know, HIPAA and all that, HIPAA laws, privacy laws. So much so, the, what I was told was that the light bath worked wonders on his condition, so much so that he was willing to pay me $5,000 for one of my antique light baths. This one in the picture, by the way. 
It mostly had to do with either relieving pain and or the restoration of malfunctioning organs. One of those. That's my, my antique, right next to it is my reproduction of it. I made a couple of those, museum quality. It was interesting, God opened the way for me to make these two light baths because it gave me all sorts of experience on light therapy and principles and it helped two lifestyles, it was amazing. As soon as I delivered it on Christmas, Christmas Eve, bam, God closed the door. Bing, 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 bing. No more light bath building for you, John. I have other things for you to do. But he didn't tell anyone else not to do this. Um, I spent so much time on these light baths. I made two museum quality reproductions of the original light bath. Two different natural medicine providers ordered a reproduction and paid me in full before I had even started to build one. They knew what a light bath could do because we used it at the Battle Creek Lifestyle Health Center. There was obvious providential workings in acquiring the originals and in building these two reproductions. But as I said, God closed the doors as soon as I had those first two delivered. So he has plans, he's been guiding me. Popularity of light baths. This is important because it will tell you, if you're considering this, that yes, people will use this, people will come. I have stories. Light baths became very popular and a new industry, industry was born. They came in many shapes and sizes by many competing manufacturers and could be found in use all over the world. Gymnasiums, sanitariums, doctor's offices, YMCA's, light institutes, palaces, castles, and ocean liners. The King of England, England. He also, this King of England, he also had the bath installed at Windsor Castle and Buckingham Palace. Emperor William, or Kaiser Wilhelm, soon after followed his example, as did King Oscar of Sweden and several other crowned heads and titled families of Europe. This is from an article on the light bath, January 6, 1916. This one was from England, unusual light bath, in that the seat is made up of thick glass slats, so light bulbs under the seat can treat both the user's bottom side and legs. There's even mirrors in the top doors to reflect the light back down. The White House owned a light bath, but this one was built in. But Dr. Kellogg had this kind of influence, what he made. It's his invention. President Harry S. Truman regularly used the White House gymnasium, which included this 16-bulb light bath and photo for. Notice how simply these things were built right into a nook. Didn't need to be fancy, didn't need to be expensive, didn't need 50 light bulbs. The White House light bath had only 16 bolts, but they were powerful bulbs. The second light bath has about 32 light sockets, but only one remaining or visible bulb. It looks like hot water pipes had also been used here in addition for radiant heat. There was their own version of this on the Titanic. This is them. Titanic light baths, both UV arc lamps and infrared light bulbs. Those long things on the floor, those are arc lamps, sun lamps. And those little dot, but those spots all through that, uh, the top of that light bath, those are bulbs. Singer Castle, you know, the inventor of Singer sewing machines, they had a light bath too, that's it. Booker T. Washington owned a light bath cabinet from the Battle Creek Sanitarium, Dr. Kellogg. Booker T. Washington is worth mentioning here. He was an amazing man. At the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, Booker T. Washington was an American educator, author, orator, and advisor to the presidents of the United States. 
So between 1890 and 1915, Washington was the dominant leader in the African American community. These are light baths at the Walter Reed Army Hospital. These ones are made out of metal. 1920s, Bethesda, Maryland, Burdock cabinet, cabinet, radio vitant ray, metal cabinets, one piece units. Those are very hard to move. I owned one of those once. I owned one of those once too. This is the light bath at the Bernard McFadden Sanitarium. That sanitarium was built across the street from the Battle Creek Sanitarium as competition. Kellogg eventually acquired it though. Eventually, McFadden went out of business and Dr. Kellogg annexed this building. It's a little more detail about this light bath. The Victor Sunshine Bath. I read in one of my antique articles or books that the light scientist at GE said that Dr. Kellogg's light bath could have been made with just a few powerful lights, such as you see being used here in this image, rather than the 50 bulbs that Kellogg used. This is at the Clinique, oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's in Switzerland, it's an Adventist sanitarium, and that was their light bath. This octagon light bath was from Milan, Italy. But why am I showing you this? Because if you're considering a light bath, don't get stuck with one design. There were multiple, endless designs, all sorts of ways to make a light bath. At worst comes to worst, I've seen one that was just sheets hung and light bulbs inside on a frame. This one seems ideal for wider users. This one's all, this one looks like it's made out of wood. Yeah, it's out of wood. Okay. The horizontal light bath. Notice the light baths on her, just on each side and on top. The one on, uh, the one with the lady patient leaning over, uh, that was similar to the light baths on the Titanic. There's the original light baths as well. Uh, that bed you see, it rolls in and out. Put the patient on, roll them in. Both are stand up, both, but the second light bath has all the bulbs sealed behind glass so the patient can receive simultaneous hydrotherapy treatments. Unclear, but it's unclear if such a device was ever built. All I've seen is this drawing. This is Thomas Edison's light bath cabinet. He has the same model that I have. Mine's older than his though. Edison, Edison thought he was just perfecting an electric light source. Just imagine his delight <laughs> when his friend Dr. Kellogg turned his bulbs into light baths, which would then be acknowledged one of the most effective of all known healing agents. Edison had a part in that. Edison purchased this light bath from Dr. Kellogg and it's still at his Edison's, in the back room, storage room at Edison's Florida estate. They took that picture for me. The fate of the light bath. Yeah, we don't see these anymore. Unfortunately, the pioneers of light therapeutics died off. The Great Depression and World War II made light baths unattainable. The medical fraternities pushed allopathy, antibiotics, and allop excuse me, and antibiotics were introduced as a silver bullet. And the light bath was forgotten. The paradigm was shifting from simple natural remedies to pharmaceuticals. And the purpose of this presentation is to facilitate the comeback of one of the most effective of all known healing agents. But it'll take effort and time. All right, these are the general benefits of light baths. It speeds healing by its ability to one, detoxify the body via sweat, decongest internal organs, heat activates sluggish organs, very important. Restore skin circulation, also very important. 
uh, see my cancer presentation and you'll, it'll tell you why. It boosts the immune system, the heat does that. It cripples infectious organisms, relieves pain. Heat is a specific for pain. It will calm and relax mind and muscles, lower blood pressure, accelerate metabolism because the body's trying to cool itself, and burn calories. Infrared saunas can do this too, you know, the modern day stuff. <clears throat> However, these are just the general benefits of a light bath. The unique benefits are next. Unique benefits of a light bath as opposed to far infrared and traditional saunas. All right, ready? You can see here that the head stays out. There's three doors. One in front, two around the neck. Number two, no rebreathing hot impure vapors, especially if they've got mercury in it or sweat. It's instant heat. You flip some light switches and poof, instant heat. Instant heat adjustment. There's six banks of light one switch per bank, six of them. <clears throat> Overheating is preventable. Just open the eye. Lower temperatures, oh, lower temperatures, 90 degrees to 110 versus 130 to 140 in a far infrared sauna. Um, I use my light bath at 110 by keeping the top doors open and the front door closed. It stays automatically 110 with all banks on. It offers deeper penetration than far infrared. Dr. Keller goes on and on about that. It's most effective and it's a draw and becomes an anchor wherever it is used. And there's no government regulations. It's not on anybody's radar. It's an antique piece of equipment. Um, <clears throat> so now let's go into details about each one of these unique benefits. Just a little bit of detail. The head stays out. Why is that important? The head stays cool. The head is out of the cabinet, which prevents headaches by keeping the head cool and can be made cooler still with a fan or a cold, wet towels changed frequently by an attendant. It also enables access to user by an attendant to change out cold, wet towels and monitor use. This is what enables light baths to consistently reverse migraines within 20 minutes. That won't really work in a sauna where every bit of you is the same temperature. So most traditional infrared saunas keep the head inside and hot. Number two, no rebreathing hot impure vapors. You know, sweating releases impurities into the hot air. Mercury is highly toxic and sweats out as a vapor, as we've discussed, which explains why mercury and heavy metal streaks can often be seen on the white towels users sit on, but nowhere else. The mercury, mercury vapor trapped between the user and the towel condenses and thus becomes visible. And other toxic stuff comes out too, kind of brownish or gray or taupe. All the other non-trapped toxic vapors are released into the air and would have been rebreathed in a closed sauna. It comes out in sweat too, but some of it in vapor. Windows should be open during a treatment. It would be ideal to exhaust the impure air inside the cabinet to the outdoors via an inline powered venting system. Breathing is difficult in the hot air of a closed sauna. Dr. K uh, uh, that being said, Dr. Kellogg showed that for every seven breaths taken in hot air, 100 degrees, only six breaths are required in cold air, 30 degrees, to obtain the same amount of oxygen. Isn't that interesting? Number three, instant heat, no warm up required. <clears throat> Number four, instant heat adjustment. Yeah, we went through that one. I found that even with all the light banks on, I can keep the temperature inside at 110 degrees just by opening those top doors, like I said. Now, overheating is preventable. The therapeutic effect of radiant heat is not dependent on the air temperature of the cabinet, although it does help. The radiant rays penetrate the skin and heat the blood even if the skin is cooled by an open door, a fan, or a cold, wet towel. 
It's not always needed, but can be an effective way to prevent overheating and increase tolerance. Feel free to contact me via the SunCure website for questions on this and blueprints. Um, I'll make those available. They're kind of online right now. They're just hidden at the moment. Haven't made it public yet. But anyway, if you want to build that, I think I'm probably the world's expert on light baths. Who else? Number six, lower temperature, deeper penetration. Luminous heat penetrates twice as deep as near infrared, according to Dr. Kellogg. Far infrared having no power of penetration, Dr. Kellogg says. Thus, a significantly lower temperature may be used. Light baths 90 to 110, far infrared saunas 120 to 140, traditional saunas 150 to 185. I never understood that. Wow. This is Dr. Kellogg talking again. The idea that the rays from non-luminous, from non-luminous heated bodies have a greater penetrating power than those with luminous heated bodies is wholly without foundation and is based upon gross ignorance of the physics of light. I told you he had something to say about this. Both the profession and the public have been shamefully imposed upon by manufacturers who have exploited the infrared idea in the sale of appliances possessing less therapeutic efficiency than an ordinary hot sandbag or hot water bottle. He was not happy about that. Number seven unique benefit. Most effective. Considered to be one of the most effective of all known healing agents from the Battle Creek Inquirer, Sunday, January 6, 1916. And it has had a long history of proven effectiveness. Number eight, no interference. Oh, I already covered that too. Light baths are not regulated or restricted or even monitored. No license is required. No intrusive requirements are attached. Only the standard electrical wiring safety practices would apply. Number nine, it is a draw. Users love the light bath. After using a light bath, a user referred to it as the Rolls Royce of, sun, of saunas. Another described it as immersing yourself in warm, healing light. Like I said, they become anchors. When users first use the light bath, it's like they have just made a great discovery. Light baths are a novelty, an attraction. They bring customers back. They have a fascinating history, rich with images and stories, and there's virtually no competition because these are so rare. Hmm. I have, uh, what I did when I was using these uh, in my home as a ministry, the light bath was an antique and people wanted to know about it. So I told them I had certain books available to me, Ministry of Healing, Light Therapeutics from Dr. Kellogg. And I said, this, I took this to talk about the, that it came from Dr. Kellogg, came from the Battle Creek Sanitarium. And where did the sanitarium get their information from? From Ellen White. Ellen White put it down in the book, Ministry of Healing, which I said, the Battle Creek Sanitarium, all this was from this book, where the principles were, based on that book, built on that book. All right, leaving unique benefits of a light bath, moving on to the chief value of the light baths. In Dr. Kellogg's words, this is going to be just a little harder to follow because he's kind of wordy. He uses a lot of words to say a few things, but it will be worth it here because it's going to be worth your while. It's a principle that will help in your health ministries. Um, and in sunbathing as well. All right, here we go. The light bath has proved of inestimable value in dealing with all classes of chronic invalids. During the time which has elapsed since its first employment, this bath has been used under the author's general supervision in more than 50,000 cases, aggregating several hundred thousand applications. At first, its chief value was attributed to its eliminative effects, sweating. But deeper study of the subject has convinced the author, Kellogg, 
that its chief value rests in its influence upon the circulation. All right, we shall explain that. The intense reddening of the skin, which appears usually within 10 or 12 hours after a sufficiently prolonged exposure to intense actinic rays, that's UV, he's talking about sunlight, sunburn, is evidence of complete relaxation of the vessels of the skin and filling of these vessels with blood to an extraordinary degree. The skin, it is, he, he's applying this to the light bath as well, the skin is capable of holding, when these vessels are fully distended, one half to two thirds of all the blood in the body. This fact sufficiently emphasizes the difference in the volume of blood contained in an anemic, pale or lacking blood, skin, and one in which the vessels are fully distended. Tanning will do that. A sunburn will do that. A light bath will do that. Hydrotherapy will do that. Not quite as well, but this, you know, this does it very, very well. The therapeutic significance of this fact lies in the influence which congestion of the skin exercises upon the blood volume of the internal parts. You following this? If the blood supply of the skin is within a short time increased from a small fraction of the total blood volume to one third and one half of the whole amount of blood contained in the body, then it is evident that we possess in artificial congestion of the skin, light bath, the light bath, a method whereby we may quickly withdraw from the great vascular organs of the trunk from one fourth to one half of their total contents, thus affording, here it is folks, almost instant relief to a congested liver engorged spleen, hyperemic lungs, inflamed stomach or intestines, or congested spine. Applications galore here. This is highly significant to medical providers. Again, let me emphasize the practicality of this. A light bath can do this. A far infrared sauna can do this. A near infrared sauna can do this. A traditional sauna can do this. Not as safely as this one can. Hydrotherapy can do this. A tan can do this. Uh, sunburn will certainly do this. But the most efficient, the most controllable, the most clean is this light bath here. And it keeps the head cool. He says, by a daily repetition of this procedure, a light bath, normal conditions are gradually restored. By daily repetition of this procedure, normal conditions are gradually restored. Really, what's normal conditions? Let's see. He says, the circulation of the skin becomes more and more active, which will decongest the internal organs. And the amount of blood in the overdistended internal organs is diminished. The enlarged liver, uh, he's adding some more organs here. The enlarged liver and enlarged, enlarged spleen contract. The congested sympathetic nerve centers return to their normal state. And the vital resistance of the tissues is increased. Catars of the stomach and intestines and biliary passages disappear. This is magnificent, isn't it? Those in the medical field, you know what that is. Number seven, the digestive secretions acquire their normal characteristics. Really, so the digestive secretions that people have if they have pale skin with poor circulation, their digestive secretions are abnormal, he's suggesting here. Number eight, the liver adrenals and lymphatic glands and other poison destroying organs resume their function. The various symptoms of auto intoxication disappear. The skin reacquires its natural elasticity and color and the patient gradually returns to a normal state. All right, definition of catars in the previous slide is inflammation of mucous membranes. And biliary passages, the tubes by which bile is secreted by the liver. 
This is from Light Therapeutics, 1927, page 118. This is Dr. Kellogg's book. Dr. Kellogg's continues, for producing the effects just described, long applications are not necessary. Three to six minutes are ordinarily sufficient for this to decongest. The duration of the bath need be only enough to produce moistening of the skin from perspiration. In certain classes of cases, longer baths are needed. This is especially true of obesity, rheumatism, gout, and in diabetics who are strong and not emaciated. In these cases, it is necessary to continue the bath sufficiently long to produce an elevation of temperature so as to stimulate oxidation of the protein wastes. For this purpose, the duration of the bath should be 15 to 30 minutes or until the temperature taken in the mouth reaches 100 to 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Making light baths self-supporting. Have some stories here. We had a friend who used, used to work with me at the Lifestyle Center, and her father built a few light baths similar to these. They weren't very attractive and, and not the best craftsmanship. He was new to woodworking. He didn't make the cabinet look like the Kellogg's cabinet. He just kind of made it look like that. Uh, the lights were just off the shelf. The lights were just off the shelf vanity, you know, bathroom vanity fixtures. Yet he made them for $900 and sold them easily for $4,000. She used one in her, in her home once a week for income. But even ugly light baths attracted clients. She gave a few, a few seminars at a local health food store and told audience what she was doing. The owner would refer folks to her. She didn't even put up flyers, and she did that on purpose. Not even a sign in the front yard. All marketing was entirely word of mouth. She offered a package deal and another option. Uh, she, didn't, she did it by word of mouth to stay off the radar, because it's still <laughs> all sorts of reasons why you just keep that off the radar. This is what she offered. A 15-minute shoulder back massage plus a 30-minute light bath session with the suggested donation. She did not charge for these. She asked for a suggested. She gave them a suggestion for a donation, and that was the suggestion, $55. She, has all, she also offered a one-hour charcoal bath for $20 with a three-quarter cup charcoal in a warm bath, with a basin of cool water and a rag by the tub to wash off face because the toxins, she said, would, be st would stream from their faces. She only wanted to work one day a week, so she created a detox Sunday with her little girls as paid assistant. She worked from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. every Sunday. Eventually, she was making $600 to $800 each Sunday. People were literally lined up. Every 45 minutes, another one was started, mostly non-Adventists. She told me that the primary reason people showed up each week was for the light bath, not the massage, which really surprised me. She said it could have easily expanded she just didn't want to. And there was also something about it being available only once a week on Sunday when there was a line that gave it a higher perceived value, a rarely offered commodity. She lived 15 to 25 minutes out, of, out from a large city. Her driveway was awful and steep, she said. Folks had to park at the bottom of the drive and walk up in the winter but they wanted their detox Sunday. She said that she made healthy food for her family during the day, breakfast and lunch. Some would come early to find out how to cook what she was making, 
and they wanted to try the healthy, good tasting food. She never advertised food or anything else for that matter, but she always made enough in case people wanted to try the healthy food and they always did. It was part of the experience, but unofficially. It was part of the ministry and she never charged for the food. All right, other kinds of light baths. <clears throat> I think these other ones are just as interesting, maybe even more. Hot exercise light baths. Sweat and exercise at the same time. Those are commercially made. There's different versions of that. Here's another one. A, just a, a exercise machine with banks of light on the side. Exercise diverts blood to the muscles. And this is what Dr. Kellogg said about doing that, about blood to the muscles, kind of like he said to the skin. All right, this is him. Phototherapy is a useful means of producing local and general hyperemia of the skin for relief of the visceral congestion, which is rarely absent in chronic disease. The power of the skin, which is nearly always present in chronic invalids, signifies not only anemia of the skin, but necessarily implies also congestion of the viscera. Necessarily implies congestion of the viscera. The general muscular weakness, which accompanies chronic disease, prevents exercise so that the muscles as well as the skin are anemic. The importance of this fact will be recognized when it is considered that the muscles, when active, are capable of holding one half of all the blood in the body, when active. The idle muscles contains not more than one-fourth or one-sixth as much blood as the active muscle. A pale skin and an inactive muscles necessarily imply congested viscera. Let me read that again. A pale skin and inactive muscles necessarily imply congested viscera. This chronic congestion of vital organs necessarily results, oh, this is significant. It necessarily results in derangement of function. Well, that's bad. And often in change of structure. Oh, that's very bad. A tan skin is evidence of a balanced circulation, said Dr. Kellogg. Benefits of hot exercise light baths. Increases sweating and detox. Greatly speeds up the decongesting of the viscera by diverting blood to both the skin and muscles. Habituates the skin to good circulation much faster faster. Hot exercise, light baths save time. Exercise, light therapy, and detox simultaneously. Excellent preparation for massage and it boosts the immune system. You don't have to build these cabinets if you do things like this. Light bath exercise. And here's another type of version, another version of it. Yet another one. And finally, this one. Now, according to Dr. Kellogg, the skin need not be hot in order for the penetrating rays to give it its many benefits. So that means that a fan may be used on the users of these, kind of, on these kinds of phototherapy exercise devices. This is a room size light bath. This and the following images are examples of simulated sunlight rooms, incorporating visible, infrared, and low-dose UV. This one was in New Jersey. Notice the nurse in the back there. When sun lamps are installed high above the user, the protective tanning glasses are not necessary. And this system acts like true full-spectrum lighting containing UV, visible, and infrared. Another version of it. Nurse is still there. A snack bar included. This next one is really my favorite. UV, infrared, and visible. It's practical and easy to reproduce. A themed attraction, a place people would want to be socially 
practical light therapy. Now there is a company overseas that makes these themed light therapy rooms, but they are very expensive because they come with all sorts of controls and options and just not necessary. Basically, heat lamps and sun lamps. You just, I haven't had the time to experiment yet. I need to get this up first and then I'm gonna experiment on that sort of thing. But you can too. We talked about doing this at uh, our closed church school at this church for various reasons that didn't really work out, at least not yet. Creating one of these in an exercise room and education sort of center, health education. Anyway, these things here, his doing here in, in, in from Europe, they were highly regulated by government. If it involves UV, the government owns it, man. Their light system is proprietary and secretive. They are very bright, high wattage, specialty lights that put out significant heat, but very little UV. So little that it's hardly worth the effort and it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, trigger government shutdowns. Governments of the world just hate it when we simulate God's healing sunlight and then dare to make profit from it. So they regulate and restrict to make it very difficult to offer such things as this. Last I checked, these were not legal to be sold here in the United States. Their website makes it sound like these were hybridized paint drying lamps from the automobile industry. So were I to create such a place like this, and I hope to, I would experiment with a bank of bright heat lamps and sun lamps in combination. Now sun lamps, they're, like I said before, they're, they've been repurposed and called amphibian lamps or iguana lamps. They have a European one that's higher wattage, um, hard to find, about $70 a piece. You just find it on Google. Now, a word of practical warning, if you actually do consider creating this or a working solution and you open it up for public use, do not advertise it. Do not make healing claims. Do not make healing claims. Install no signs, word of mouth only. Uh, have it be uh, um, termed your own private sun planning, pl tanning place, and people that come here are invited. They're your guests. Do not charge for the service. Combine it with other services and suggest a donation. Very casually. Stay off the radar. This is a marvelous thing. You know, even if it was just heat lamps, whoa, what a pleasant, pleasant feeling in the winter. A social event, a way to start conversations. You understand what I mean by that? It's a place people want to be, if you make it such. Oh, by the way, there are all sorts of different versions of this from that company. You can just create your own. This is another version similar to it. Notice the curve. Look on top of that uh, wallpaper there. You see that? There's a curve in it right there in the corner. It's sitting out from the actual wall. It's not connected to the wall. It's about a foot away from the wall, and they built a frame that curves in a corner, and then you put this material, you, you can find that online on Google, create your own wallpaper as long as you want sort of thing. That's easy to do now. That's from a little further away. This is another version that they had, one of the first ones I'd ever seen, and the room is so tiny. They have different versions of, th these, of, those, of those lights too. There's always a fan involved because it puts out a lot of heat. Probably need an air conditioner too. Let me back up. See that? There's sand. Wood floor and sand. Many times they create a sand thing. This one is artificial turf. That's nice. Not as nice as the sand though. This is right there in that curved corner. It looks like it's wood or artificial. Oh, it's wood looking carpet, I believe. You think of the possibilities here now, right? That's a clearer look of that curve. Just think on the possibilities. 
This one is from antiquity here. During the war on TB, they created these um, indoor beaches. <laughs> we get in so much trouble for doing that now. Protocol for a Kellogg light bath. And this is the last section. This is for the diehards that really want to do this. If you made up your mind to it, I have the protocol right here. And I have it in, uh, in documents as well that I can send you if you're interested. Just contact me at thesuncure.com. Um, but I'll read it here just in case. Uh, light bath protocol. These are the restrictions. Anyone wanting to use the light bath must be seen, instructed, and then attended in his or her first two to three sessions to make sure they handle this well. If physicians are, oh, we made this protocol when we had it at the church. And I started it when I was using it at home, but we adapted it for the church because there's a whole lot more eyes on us. Anyway. A physician's approval must be obtained by those who have a high or irregular heart rate, abnormal blood pressure, and if pregnant. We were covering ourselves here. All users must first sign the informed consent form. Use is denied for mental instability, because they cannot communicate what's happening to them, inability to communicate, and for those who, have con who continue to smoke, drink, or use drugs. They're not interested in health. Those with a continuing history of dizziness, fainting spells, narcolepsy, or seizures should not use the light. Notice this one I just underlined here. Anyone claiming that they do not tolerate heat well should never use a light bath. A tepid charcoal bath is an effective alternative. Yes, it is. Oh, I got to tell you this story. It's a painful story. It makes us look really bad, but... We had a client once in our home. They expressed interest in using it, so we did. Um, my wife attended them. But the protocol that we always use, well, somehow we kind of messed up on that. We didn't follow it to the letter. She told us that she did not tolerate heat. So we said, well, let's see how you do. There's just a few banks on. Well, unfortunately... Unfortunately, after a while, my wife came out of that room without the patient, and her husband was sitting by, by me by the couch. She comes out she, all panicky and sweaty and wide eyed. And, oh, God, what, she's. We went in there, we thought she was dead. She was leaning like this, and her eyes were open. I thought she was dead. I didn't realize people could faint with their eyes open, but we pulled her out of there without any clothing, the husband right there, and got, used the white, the, the wet, cold washcloths, wiped her down, wiped her down, and fanned her, and um, laid her down flat. It was a horrible experience. <laughs> We're never going to do that again. Oh, no. It's a very effective tool. You can overdo it. So anyone ever claims they can't tolerate heat, you don't put them in there. Um, we start out people very slow. It's something people aren't used to. People aren't used to heat. They aren't used to sweating. Sometimes people have fainted in lifestyle centers when they use these things uh, because uh, they're not used to sweating. Well, that horrible story is over. Huh. Yeah, yeah, I did that. Here we go. All right. Try to forget that story. I kind of regret I even told you. Warnings two, three, and four. Fever, no light bath while in a feverish condition. Full stomachs. You know the body expends a lot of energy to cool itself in a light bath. It's similar to vigorous exercise. The heart rate increases. Since the resources required to digest a heavy meal will be diverted to cool the body, we do not use a light bath after large meals lest the body become exhausted and the food stays in the stomach longer than it should and begin to putrefy and maybe even up, check, if they do it too hard. Water. No open water in or on the light bath. Light bath should be plugged into a dedicated 20 amp, 120 volt GFCI outlet to avoid the result of water spill on electric light sockets. Warning five and six. Privacy, do not allow a user to undress while attendant is in the room, if at all possible. 
impure vapors. Keep windows open to assure continued fresh air and to prevent the buildup of impure sweat vapors. All right, water. Have a user drink a glass. Should start with clear urine. Towels, place on chair and under feet. Document resting heart rate seven minutes later, have it checked again. Preheat, not necessary to preheat the light bath as heat is instant when switched on. However, some users prefer it because the chair gets, is warmed. And most important, pray for God's healing grace before each use, acknowledge that he it is who does the healing. How long in the light bath? Beginners, 10 to 15 minutes. Experience up to 30 minutes is the typical range for detoxing, although some prefer more. As a tonic, six to eight minutes, if user desires only the tonic effect that will decongest internal organs and improve skin circulation. End the light bath if heart rate increases by 30% of its resting rate, or usually becomes lightheaded or nauseated. Keep the head cool with a wet, icy washcloth and fan. This prevents headaches and face flushing. Ice bags behind the ears will help keep the heart rate low. A cold, wet towel around the neck will block the rising heat waves from the head hole to keep the head cool. Keep changing the white, icy towels as they warm quickly. The ability to keep the head cool and to breathe cool, pure air are two of the primary advantages of a light bath as compared to any other kind of sauna or infrared cabinet. 100 to 110 degrees is the upper limit. Because light bulbs can be pretty intense, unlike fire infrared heaters. It doesn't require the temperature to go up as much and it also penetrates deeper, again, not requiring the temperature as high. Higher temperatures are not therapeutically necessary, in other words, though some may prefer it. Ingest, adjust intensity instantly without shutting off the healing rays. The light bath has multiple ways to adjust the temperature and intensity of the rays. Switch on and off the, the banks, open and close doors, use a fan, adjust the, the four vents, uh, use a cold wet towel as you're getting a light bath. Keep yourself cool. After a light bath, this is Dr. Kellogg talking, applications of radiant heat should always be followed by a cooling procedure. Cool wet cloth rub, 65 to 80 degrees, or a cool or tepid, 80 to 90 degrees shower. The complete filling of the skin with blood removes the disabling congestion of the liver, stomach, spleen, and other internal parts. This relief is rendered more or less permanent by the fixation of the blood in the skin affected by the cold application, which always follows the electric light bath, as well as other general heating measures. Just very quick, wipe them down and you're done. The active vascular dilat dilatation following this cold application is of much longer duration than that resulting from the application of heat alone. Thus, a more or less durable effect is produced. After a light bath, have user drink another glass of water and have them lie down quietly for 30 minutes. It's recommended after a light bath session, if possible. And that is the light bath. Thank you for listening. Again, you can uh, contact me via the suncure.com uh, website. Thank you. And that is it.